no matter what kind of doctor I go to. At my age, I end up on my back with my feet in the air. <laughs> I thought that was excessive at the optometrist. I have next to me Dr. Luis Espina, who is a board-certified family medicine physician who I actually trained with as my senior in residency. In addition to being a great physician and engineer, he's also a part-time stand-up comic. <laughs> no. So today we're gonna actually watch professionals deliver medical jokes. Are you excited? I am very excited. You don't look excited. I am ex- I'm Scream! Woo! You must wait in the waiting room. There's no chance of not waiting. That's the name of the room. Then they call you. You get very excited when they call you. Because you think now you're going to see the doctor. But you're not. Now you're going into the next smaller waiting room. But I hate the extra wait, so I start, maybe I'll start screwing around with some of his stuff, you know? Maybe I'll turn that thing up a little bit. <laughs> Whatever the hell that does. Take all the tongue depressors out, lick them all, put them all back. Yeah. That joke does not age well with COVID. No, I was naughty, naughty there. When was the last time you used a tongue depressor? Today. No way. Yes. You use them regularly? Yes. Just once I'd like to say to the doctor, you know what? I'm not ready for you yet. <laughs> Why don't you go back in your little office? I'll be in in a minute. And get your pants off. <laughs> then we'll see what's what. Yeah, it's not going to go. Why does the doctor need that little office for anyway? You know, his books, little stupid aquarium there. I guess he doesn't want people to see him looking stuff up. What the hell was that? <laughs> that happens all the time! You got that, bro. But that's all, that's good. Yeah, and YouTube's a good thing. How many times do I go to the clinical dermatology book? In oh my day? god, yeah, absolutely. And the truth of the matter is, what would you rather, I wing it or I confirm it? Exactly. So they sent me to my regular doctor for a follow-up, and I was nervous going, because my uh, cholesterol... <laughs> I knew it was going to be high, because last year it was high, and uh, I hadn't done anything different. <laughs> I love patients that are like, my cholesterol didn't go down. I'm like, well, have you changed anything? They're like, no. And the funniest is when, you know, the, the STD results come back and they act shocked, and then you talk to the health department and they've known since 2008 that something's been there, but they act shocked. Doctors are good people. That's why they avoid the word pain. It's a buzzword. They won't hit it a lot. They don't want to scare anybody. Doctors will tell you all about pressure. <laughs> What? I'll tell you all about the pressure you're going to experience. Stick and a burn. If a doctor tells you're about to feel some pressure, buckle up. <laughs> That's how I feel about the dentist. The dentist always says, you're going to feel some pressure. I'm like, no, I feel my gum is on fire. Yeah, no, I, I tell them it's going to hurt. Like if, if I'm going to give them a, a tetanus injection, for example, I tell them straight out, this one's going to hurt. I'll oversell it and under deliver. Hey, I feel sorry for the doctors because they have to give us our diagnosis in fruit. <laughs> in fruit? You go to the doctor and they say, oh, you have, you have a tumor. Oh, okay, how big is it, doc? <laughs> you do that? Oh, hell yeah. Grapefruit? Oh, well, that's you. You deep trouble and we're in grapefruit land. Then the doctor gets sick of looking at your stupid face. He goes, you have a grapefruit. Oh, shit. <laughs> good, I knew it, I called it. I went to the doctor. He said, you're going through the change of life. Change of life. Girls, remember when you went through puberty, they told you you were becoming a woman? You go through the change of life, they don't tell you what you're becoming. <laughs> I'm becoming my father. <laughs> oh my God. Tumors are often compared to fruit. A pear, a lemon, a grapefruit. Interesting fact, worst tumor, grapefruit. Worst fruit, grapefruit. <laughs> unfortunate that there's another fruit that's much smaller named grape because you know there's situations in doctor's offices we found a tumor it's the size of a grape thank god Fruit. i didn't finish <laughs> why does every doctor use fruit or food because we're trying to be relatable but pathologists use food all oh the time my they, use, they use they use food references more than us. It was hard to go to lunch when I was on my pathology research. Yeah, it was like the pizza stain. I'm like, what is a pizza stain? The strawberry sign. I want you to know I don't automatically wash my hands every time I go to the bathroom, okay? Can you deal with that? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You know when I wash my hands? When I shit on them. That's the only time. That's the o-
And you know how often that happens? Tops, tops, two, three times a week. Tops. <laughs> if you kill all the germs around you and live a completely sterile life, then when germs do come along, you're not going to be prepared. And never mind ordinary germs. What are you going to do when some super virus comes along that turns your vital organs into liquid <laughs> I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to get sick, you're going to die, and you're going to deserve it because you're f***ing weak and you got a weak immune system. How did he know COVID was coming? He is Nostradamus. Yeah. He knew everything. I am glad he's not here they, for they him. It would give him a pain. Oh my, he, this wouldn't even be funny to him. The doctor looks at me and says, you're peeing 11 times a day. Then you may have something wrong with your prostate. <laughs> so, what we need to do, some of you are ahead of me. I did not know what this was gonna feel like. And this was the actual sound I made. I went, oh! What's the weirdest reaction you, you had from a patient in doing a prostate exam? I've had strange sounds. I had one guy almost break my finger off. Mm -mm. With it, the sphincter? It, it was, no, it was the clenching and the twisting that was the problem. The twisting, okay. I was gonna so, say, because that's a strong uh, sphincter. Uh, well, he was a strong man, so I- Why didn't he just slide out? Well, it, he clenched everything. I mean, he clamped. Here's my cool story. <clears throat> I'm about to do a pap smear. We're doing the exam, I talk to the patient, walk them through it, I take my speculum, which is a see-through speculum. It's not one of the metal ones. Mm -hmm. I get a little lubricant on the lower part, not the top, so it doesn't interfere with my pap smear. And just about to insert it, I'm like, feel the speculum, and it's jagged edge yeah, on I, one I side. Always, I always check On it. one side. If I would have inserted, yeah, yeah, it would have just slit the skin right over. Yeah. I was diagnosed with bilateral breast cancer, and I ended up getting a double mastectomy. And before I had that? a double mastectomy, I was already pretty flat chested. And I made so many jokes over the years about how small my chest was that I started to think that maybe my boobs overheard me. <laughs> and we're just like, you know what? We're sick of this. <laughs> Let's kill her. <laughs> this is called owning your own experience. Yeah. Something terrible happens to you, yeah. and you found your unique way of coping with it, and it's a positive outlet, and I'm jealous, because I want to be better at that. On that bright note, check out this Grey's Anatomy <laughs> review <laughs> I did with Dr. Espina. And what's your favorite video? You can point to the other side. No dancing videos. No da Oh, the last TikTok video has him dancing in it. Click that. As always, stay happy and healthy.